My name's Liam Toomey. I'm an elite paratriathlete for Australia. I'm a mental health ambassador for the Black Dog Institute and the Start Foundation. And my experience sort of post school and or high school really is that I had a few gap years, uh, sort of explored working and enjoying life and didn't really get too caught up in going to uni and following that sort of general trend and sort of found my way into sport at a later age and realised that that's sort of the life I wanted to pursue and how I wanted to go about life and um, sort of went from there really. So I got thrown in the deep end a little bit. I was um, uh, swimming, doing a bit of swimming and I didn't really enjoy it. I didn't enjoy racing. It was really boring swimming in a pool. And I had a mate who'd gone to the Paralympics for triathlon and he told me that I should get involved. And I really just sort of went with that. And he pushed me to do, to do a race. And at the time I sort of had never swum in the ocean. I didn't own a bike and I never run 5K. And um, he just said, look, don't worry about all that stuff. That's all, you can work that out later. Just come and do the race. And I did it and I was terrible, but I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the experience and I sort of just went from there. I think just for me, it's really just been believing in myself. Like it's really like naive when I signed up to the first one to think oh, I'm going to go to the Paralympics and do this and do that when I had no backing in it. I had no leg to stand on at all in how I was going to do that. And to just sort of have that blind faith that it could work out was I think really important. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So I train on a sort of full time roster, I guess I do about 20 to 25 hours a week of training, probably swim six days a week, run four ride three or four and then go to the gym three times a week. So it's pretty busy. It's um, non-stop most mornings, sort of first thing in the morning till mid afternoon. And then I'll go to work and work in the afternoon as well. And I've got a pretty laid back job, which is helpful, but it involves a lot of commitment to that. And then training, I would regu uh, sorry, sorry, racing. I would generally race sort of from about February to November and then have a little break between there sort of nationally and internationally. Um, I think at, the f at first I was pretty disappointed to have racing cancelled and like we would generally go live overseas in the Australian winter and live in Spain and live in the summer and race over there in Europe and to sort of have that postponed last year and obviously this year has been disappointing but in the long term the um, pandemic actually benefited me quite a lot. It gave me a lot of time to just focus on what I needed to and build up a training regime and like stick to that because whilst I'm you know sort of in my late 20s my training age is pretty young I'm still pretty green to the sport and fresh and like to just tick all those boxes and turn up and be consistent has been really important and I actually got a lot out of last year and this year as well as a whole from a training perspective and mentally and I sort of saw that approach with a lot of people they either sort of fell to the side with it or they gained a lot from it so I was really lucky to get that I miss competing as much as I used to but generally that's starting to come back a little bit more to the forefront which is nice. Yeah, so the Black Dog Institute's a mental health foundation based around sort of looking at uh, people suffering from depression or mental health and sort of bipolar and any of those sort of mental illnesses. Uh, basically, I got involved with them in 2018 through a friend who had been sort of a member of the association there and got involved with their CEO and started swimming with them. And there's a lot of sort of like-minded people that follow that same idea that, you know, if you eat well, you have good connections and you exercise and do things that inspire you, you actually benefit from it, like mentally and like being involved with others. And I've been involved with them for a couple of years now and it's just been, yeah, fantastic. Like I've met some great people, got to do a lot of work with them sort of through the AIS and the foundation itself. And yeah, it's a pretty important job, I think, yeah. So it wouldn't be so much day to day. Like I generally would just be an ambassador and do events and try and do fundraising and I do general fundraising. At the moment I've been doing a program with the Australian Institute of Sport which is actually partnered up with the Black Dog Institute and it's called the Mental Fitness Program. So we go and speak to high school students between year 7 and 12 all around Australia about like the basic principles about like how you build mental fitness in terms of like I guess explaining to a you know teenager that having gratitude and mindfulness and like meaning and purpose in life is really important in both like family, friends, social life, anything like that. And then how that sort of intertwines with us as athletes and how we use that to prepare for racing and life and just general obstacles, yeah. which has been pretty special. I've done a lot of that in the last couple of years, yeah. which is yeah very helpful for me to remind myself to be grateful for how good life is when I'm explaining it to a bunch of school students stuck at home on Zoom, yeah. I think for me, it's really important because 
I, we never had any of that when I was at school, like, or if they did, I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> I, yeah, wasn't the best school student. So I think going back to schools as well has been really important for me to sort of just be vulnerable and open about what's going on. And I think it's really easy for people to get caught up in saying we're okay, but it is yeah, really important to say that I'm not okay and just sort of go with that notion because it's really, I think for me, the biggest thing is being able to share with other people how I'm going you know, it creates such a good connection of trust and like support and it just helps make things so much easier. Yeah, so there is like obviously being like a categorised athlete, there's a lot of support with like an AIS, like mental health referral network. Uh, we have athlete and wellbeing managers and like I would see a sports psychologist quite uh, consistently on top of like regular sort of outside stuff for that because I think it's really easy as an athlete to put all my value of who I am and my self-worth into my race and how I perform, when realistically the people that care about me don't really care how I race and what place I come. They care that I'm enjoying the race and that I'm enjoying what I do. Everything else is a bonus to that. So being able to step back and realise that I'm not my performance, I'm actually got a lot more going on, is pretty yeah, important to come back to. Um, so I really enjoyed trying not to take myself too seriously. Um, I think if I'm not having fun doing it, I shouldn't be doing it. Like I really, um, I used to be quite caught up when I go to races and get in my own head and stress out and I never race well when I'm too serious so I think like I'd like to listen to a lot of music for me I like to listen to a lot of music have a lot of fun like laugh a lot leading up to races and just enjoy being around my training partners and mates and then also just like realizing that it's just a race you know like once it's over you move forward you know, I'm allowed, I've always, like, I'm probably a pretty harsh critic of myself when I race, but being able to just sort of analyse that on the day and then move forward and realise that there's always another race, there's always another opportunity, and, yeah, you can always move forward from it. Yeah, so I guess my experience really is basically that when I was at school, I sort of struggled, like, I lost my leg when I was in year one, in 2001, so, like, 20 years ago, um, and I sort of went to high school and I didn't really talk about it or deal with it or any, in any sense like that. And I really struggled with it. And I think anyone around me would have known that I was struggling with it. <laughs> and I just blatantly refused to accept that and just wanted to pretend that I was okay when I really wasn't. And I wasn't uh, the best school student. <laughs> I got in quite a bit of trouble at school and I sort of outside of school got in trouble as well. And I sort of started experimenting using drugs and alcohol when I was sort of in my early teens. and found a lot of relief in that really quickly and sort of just went to that and sort of really my life fell off track pretty quickly. But as I got older, like I stopped having as much fun. I started getting in more trouble and I started sort of being left with nowhere to go and less people around and more people concerned about me. And as a result, I was about 21 when I got clean because my life had just sort of spiraled out of control and I was really left with no other alternative except I was going to either die or go to jail. Like I really didn't see any other way of getting out of that. And I was just lucky enough to have a moment, like a light bulb moment where I woke up and I just never wanted to feel like that again. You know, I didn't like myself. I didn't like what I did and I didn't like who I was. And getting to wake up and realise that I sort of had to try and do things differently and just ask for help. Like that was the biggest thing. Like I had to just be willing to finally give up and realise that I probably don't have a handle on this. And that was really important. Yeah. I think the hardest thing if, when trying to give advice, to, especially to people that are supporting people that are struggling, is that we, you can't help someone that doesn't want to help themselves. And if they're able, it's just about being there. It's just really about being there and let, supporting them, not pressuring, not forcing anything, I think. I've had a lot of mates, obviously, as well, struggle with mental health through the years and being able to know that you're there, but without pushing them to do something that they're not ready to do is really important so that when they do feel ready they're comfortable to come to you. I think that's been the biggest thing for me is knowing when to push a little bit but also being able to have a step back and realise that everyone has to make their own choices. Yeah. Yeah so I think if looking at it firstly as like an athlete I really enjoy like the challenge of setting a task and trying to achieve a goal whether it be a time or a result or just pushing myself to the limit and seeing what I can do physically has been really important to I guess build like mental and physical strength and feel accomplished. And then on like a personal level, like getting the work in the mental health sort of area, like I just get so much relief out of it and enjoyment, like getting to share my experiences is um, a pretty powerful thing. 
and getting to have people relate and draw a lot from it has been pretty important. Like going to speak to these high school students and like see students that actually get a lot out of it is pretty special and like, you know, you can't really replace that at all. Yeah, I think stuff like this is really important. And I think speaking to people that are younger, like I've been doing it obviously through the mental health, like fitness program and going to speak to younger students and speaking to them about it has been really important because yeah, like I said, I really had no idea about any of it until I was in my mid twenties and sort of touched on it at all. And I'd had heaps of hard, tough experiences in my life and I'd never really delved into it. I just pretended everything was okay. And I think just realizing that that's not how you can sort of manage things, things eventually will boil over. And I think just yeah, being supportive and like for me, I'm pretty casual about it. <laughs> I'm pretty casual about talking about pretty intense things. And I think that sort of makes it easier for people, especially around me to feel comfortable. And I yeah, appreciate that, yeah. that you know, there are some intense things going on, but it's not the end of the world. There's always more to come, yeah. In sport, I would say it was pretty important for me to just really have a go and trust my gut. Like I did a lot of sports that I wasn't very good at when I first started getting back into it and trying to do it. Like I pretty much only learned to swim when I was 21 again and just thought oh, I could try and go to the Paralympics. And like would, you would have seen me swimming and had no idea that that was ever a possibility. But just believing that little bit, I think is really important. And also having fun with it. Things I didn't enjoy, I stopped doing. And once I found something I enjoyed, it just makes turning up to training and turning up to it so much easier and fulfilling, yeah. I think it's really important to just show up consistently, like sort of doing those little steps every day to make things better. Like obviously for me at the moment, like I've fractured my hip, I'm not in a good space, like out of work, out of doing everything. And it's easy for my mental health to drop at that point, but sort of showing up to those little things, like getting out of bed, like doing being grateful for things in my life being able to like eat well look after myself and have a basic routine it, they're just little things that help everyone feel good about themselves and when there's not a lot of structure in life it's easy to get lost like waking up with a purpose is important so if you can't find that i think it's really important to just sort of focus on the little things because they all add up and you can go to bed every day and feel accomplished and like you've done something and the next day is always a bit better yeah, the specifically probably the best one I've done has been, I went and spoke to uh, Kamaruka, like education centre. So they're basically a high school for students with ADHD or autism or students that just can't be in a general classroom, uh, just due to like behavioural issues or whatever. And going to speak to them, um, I was sort of told when I turned up that, yeah, they might not be too intensive. They might, you know, be quite rude or jump in and say things. And like, they were the best people I've spoken to in two years over like thousands of students, these 30 or 40 boys just in there. And they were so attentive and listened to everything and asked me questions for at least half an hour. And like, they were so interested in everything. And I think that was what I got the most out of it was that they weren't undersold, but you sort of go in with that um, idea that they're going to be disruptive. They're not going to listen. They're not going to show you much appreciation. And it was the total opposite. They were like the best students I've spoken to. And I was like, we had to leave. Like I had to leave because I had to go home. And um, like I hadn't had that with most schools. You know, high school students generally are very blase about things. They can't wait for you to leave. They're not really listening to a lot. And it's not a personal thing. It's just high school students. So they've been my best probably by far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really important. Like if I was, when I was younger, like I obviously didn't speak about a lot, but it would have been, wouldn't have taken much at all for me to sort of follow the right path if I had been open about it. So I think it's just not sort of dis dismissing feelings and situations because whatever anyone's going through is usually important to them. So saying, oh, it's not as bad as so-and-so is like a really weird way to go about it. I think being able to realise that whatever anyone's feeling is totally natural and totally how they're allowed to feel about any given situation so not underplaying anything that's sort of spoken about yeah probably better say yes say yes to everything um, I've like reluctantly in the last few years just thrown myself in the deep end quite a lot by saying yes to things that I'm totally underqualified for totally not in the space to be able to do and it eventually either pays off or it doesn't and I've never wanted to be in a place where I sort of thought why didn't I do that 
I'm always glad I've done it, even though it's uncomfortable and I've not enjoyed it. And, you know, I feel nauseous going to races and events. Like once I do them, I'm stoked that I've done it. And it's always a good feeling to just have gone with it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think, um, yeah, for me, I was obviously like thought I was a bit of a macho guy when I was younger and a teenager and was very unwilling to talk about things because it was dismissed as or in my eyes seen as being weak and vul vulnerability was seen as being soft really for me when I was growing up. But to look at it now, like being vulnerable is actually a real strength and something that I think everyone wishes they could sort of do in a certain way. And just being able to sort of realize, like I think having mates are really important. Like I used to have a lot of friends when I was younger that I wasn't very close with. And now I have a handful of friends that I'm really close with, generally mates and men that I would talk to about things and four or five guys that I would reach out to. And it's just about building like a bit of quantity, sorry, over quality and being able to realize that like, I have people in my corner that back me and look after me and same vice versa. Yeah, a good circle of trust is really important, I think. Yeah, uh, I think being anxious before a race is totally normal. And I think if I, was, if I wasn't anxious before a race, race, I'm probably not too invested in it. Like the anxiousness for me comes from putting in all the work beforehand and getting to a race, I think is more important about just realizing what I've done previously training wise. Like if I can turn up to a race and know I've trained well and I've done everything possible, then the result and the effort just have to be there. Like the effort just has to be there. The result is what it is. I think it's very easy to get caught up on a result of winning a race or doing this or coming third or fourth or whatever when if I've trained my heart out for the weeks leading up to it and I go to the race and I give my best effort, there's nothing else I can do. Like it's always for me as well in a race, focusing on like a process, like what are my cues when I swim and when I ride and when I run that I think about and everything else shouldn't, should be irrelevant. What, everyone, what the guy in front of me is doing or the guy behind me is doing, I'm not racing them at that point. I am in a sense, but I'm racing myself and how I can get better. So yeah, just bringing it back to what I can do because that's the only thing we can control really. Yeah, um, I think obviously like it's good at the moment. Like for me, life in my eyes has become a bit heavy at the moment. Like I'm out of training for eight weeks. I'm not able to walk or do anything I would do that would usually help my mental health. Like obviously I'd train like three to five hours a day and I can't even walk at the moment. So I'm a little bit light on exercise and doing things for endorphins. And just really for me, prioritizing like those little basic things like meditating and mindfulness and doing things that will actually help me feel better instead of like, it's easy to zone away in a TV or eat junk food and sort of just pig out a little bit emotionally and just lose track. But pulling it all back to like basic little things of doing a lot of mindfulness and yeah, breathing and just focusing on catching up with mates and begrudgingly hanging out with mates. like. I'm in a state where I love hanging out with my mates, but because I'm not at my usual level, I don't feel like it's benefiting me, but I go and I really enjoy it once I'm there. It's always just the first step of getting there, getting out the door and doing something. And there's always a positive for it for me at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely say it would because obviously, yeah, our races would go for about an hour. A lot of it does come down to how we breathe as well, which is massive. Like, speaking about just like meditating and then going to mindfulness like everything's about breath like you, if you bring it back to the breath you can f zone out everything else all the head noise all the stuff that's going on whatever and else is doing just about breathing because obviously yeah if i'm not breathing i'm gonna struggle <laughs> so i think that's really helpful to just come back to a basic sort of understanding of how i go through it and everything else follows suit yeah I think it's been massive for me. Um, I was yeah, inherently quite lazy for my teenage years and when I was at school and sort of out of school for a while, but getting up and doing those daily things that sort of tick a box, I'm all about having like healthy habits and then just sort of boxing on top of each other, whether it be like I'm a bit, I'm a bit anal to be honest now. I get out of bed and my, I have to make my bed like the first thing I do when I wake up and then I follow suit with other sort of things like that. And it's not about how I feel about it. It's just about doing it, you know, because what I think about things and what I feel about things sometimes will change by what I do. So if I don't do those things, my emotions and my mental health may drop. But if I do them, I'm just ticking the box and just like turning up. And for me, it's all about just turning up and being like basically consistent all the time and things will work out. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, obviously, I first sort of got clean about six years ago, and I was not yeah, as open and flippant about things as I am now. That probably took me a couple of years of being begrudgingly again, like talking about my feelings and how I felt and seeing a psych and doing all these basic little things and building a circle before I just felt comfortable doing it like this, like I'm just having a coffee and a catch up. So I think, yeah, it's easy to see, this is a finished product where I am now of how I speak about things that's taken me a couple of years. So it's not, yeah, I was definitely not like this when I first started getting into it. So it does take time, yeah. Yeah, I reckon it's what saved me, to be honest, and has helped change my perspective and my life completely because I just feel like a different person because of it. I was very um, closed off and unwilling to talk about things for a lot of time, but to come to this point and be able to just, yeah, be so casual about it and open, I think it helps other people as well. It helps other people see that it is possible, really, especially people that I used to know, that used to know what I was like to see what I'm like now and see a transition. It's been really important, yeah.